Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Janet and I'm on a Depop and website called Primary Studios where I sell secondhand and vintage fashion. Today I am doing a flea market vlog where I am prepping for Come Together Market which is happening this Saturday which is December 9th and today is Monday, December 4th I think. I mentioned in my last market vlog which was for Los Feliz I think sometime in October October, I wanted to get an updated sign. This sign is the one that I've been using at all my markets except for my very first one. It's one that I made by myself. I think if I had a more professional looking sign, it would add legitimacy to my booth and hopefully make people want to come in and buy more things. So what I did was I bought a new sign and it's from this website that I kept getting ads for on Pinterest. The brand name is called Piece of Sign and they're based in Tokyo in Japan. It came in two separate packages. This is the first part which is like I'm guessing the sign part and then it has a base. And then this right here is the base from you can see Piece of Sign. It was $280. There was no shipping fee and there was no tax or anything added so it's just a $280 flat. While that is pretty expensive, I'm hoping I can use this at a few markets and if it does draw in more customers, I think it's worth it. Plus, it just kind of feels nice to have an official sign. So let's open this up. Here she is. This is the sign. This has my logo. It says Everyday Vintage for the Modern Era, which is like my slogan, I guess. And then it has my social media right here. And then it has my website. And it's like a thick birch wood, I think it's birch wood board. So let's open the base. It is very heavy. It's like a piece of slanted metal. It has this little carrying handle right here as well. So just put it here. Yay! This is the sign. I think it looks really good. I wish the... maybe I should have made the logo a little bit bigger, but I think it looks very like minimal and chic. I can just use this base for other things too, so if I want to just get another piece of wood printed and then just put something else on here, I could also do that. So now what I need to do is to start tagging all the items that don't have tags. I already took out the things that I don't want to bring to the market, so I just need to tag things that I haven't tagged since the last market. Then these are things I have already brought the previous market, so they have all the tags and they're ready to go. These ones are things that need to have the stickers put on. Same over here, these things need stickers, these things do not. And then I also have this that needs stickers and then this that does not need stickers because they're already tagged. And finally, these are things I decide to take out. These are things that I usually bring to the market, but I just didn't feel like it matched the vibe and I wanted to have a more cohesive look overall. I used to have the approach where I would try to bring as much as possible because I assumed the more items I had in my booth, the more likely it was that someone would buy something. But I realized because my racks were super packed, it felt like customers felt a little bit overwhelmed when they came in and they would leave without really being able to look at everything. So I think having a smaller curation but bringing like my best items would encourage people to shop more and it would also increase the brand image. If I have a bunch of things that are feel mismatched, it just kind of feels like I am not providing them the service of curation because essentially that's what selling vintage is now because so many people sell vintage you have to have like a specific look that you are selling. Once I tag all the things that need tags then I will go ahead and start packing but today is only Monday so I don't necessarily need to start packing yet. I just want to figure out a few other like booth details just to make it look nicer. I think one change I am going to do is to bring this rug. Last time I didn't bring it to Los Feliz Market and I do feel like having a rug elevates the space a lot because it kind of makes it feel more homey and I don't know just more inviting. Today is Friday and it is currently 9 13 so just have a few things left to do. What I didn't show you guys doing was just tagging my items and organizing them so this time I decided instead of organizing my items by like category like skirts, tops, jackets, dresses, I wanted to organize it by kind of like curate an aesthetic for each rack and then within that rack have the like top stresses skirts whatever so i'll explain a little bit like you can see right here this is going to be my rack for um kind of more like neutral minimalist a little bit more glam looks and then this is kind of like a minimalist western look so we got some leather going on some more of my like warmer colors 
some sweaters and then you see like these tones right here my denim then we have this rack over here and these are like my more funky pieces so i have like this printed blouse some checkers and some plaid patterns i'm hoping this new setup will kind of encourage people to like shop around and look around more so these are the bags that i made so i just need to make sure i remember to tag these and then just put some of those things from that rack back into these racks. Pack everything up, break down my racks. Let's just get started. stoplight and I'm almost at the market and it's 8 30 ish so I left a little later than I was expecting to but you know that happens I'm dressed very cozy because it was windy in the morning I think the weather will be perfect for this market I just need to get there and start setting up so I'll see you guys there Yeah, but I just made two sales to a couple. One was a black velvet dress and the other one was a like fuzzy alpaca like chunky knit sweater. So I'm glad that those two sold and yeah, setup has been good and I'm pretty happy with how my booth turned out since I did change a few things up. There are a few things that I wish I did better, especially like this mirror, it's a little bit crooked, but otherwise I am already so I'll do a booth tour. This is the new sign that I got from Piso Sign. So I'm glad I got it. I do think it adds to the vibe of the booth. Then I have my little outfit display. I wanted to do kind of like a fancier New Year's Eve kind of look. My male mannequin right here. Then I have my sign as usual. It's an overview. I'm trying. I'm trying. Then this is my rack of the more like minimal kind of glam aesthetic, I would say. And then I have my mirror hanging here with some clamps on top. And then I also have my like more funky woman's vintage right here. I also finally decided to bring my like Noreen curtains. I have my lantern as usual and my table. I decided to use my more minimal tablecloth. Then I also have my shop sign, my business cards, more bags right here some jackets on display and then i also have a few things on display in the back this is my more like western e minimalist western look right here uh, a lot more like warm tones in here and then i have my men's vintage right here so yeah we got a lot of sporty jackets and some leather jackets this is a really cool diesel one then I got some other like pattern stuff like camo and this uh, fuzzy vest. So that's my booth. ish so I'm just gonna show you a few things that I like that I don't think I put on my website yet there's this bag which is like a champion little nylon bag and then I have this woven bag I really think this is cute and I like this texture I think it's both a summer and fall bag because it's not straw it's made out of like woven leather I also have this um, dress I brought out a lot of dresses just because New Year's Eve is coming up so I thought people might have like holiday parties and stuff like that to go to there's another one. I really love this one. It's very simple, but it looks really gorgeous on. It has like a wider boat neck. And here are my bags. They haven't sold yet, but I feel like they'll sell better online than in person. So I just love them because they have so much room and you can carry everything in here. I personally really, really like this dress. I love the flow of it. I like how it has 
like a very dainty, like preppy, very lacy detail. And it has like this very soft pleat on it with some ruffles and lace on the bottom. And then this coat is so, so gorgeous. I think I would keep it for myself if the sleeves weren't short on me, but I do love the length of it and the color is just, yeah, it's just really nice. So it's time to pack up and head home. I did make a few more sales uh, around 2 o'clock and then it was kind of dead until 3 but now it's just time to pack up. and now it is 3.55. I'm heading to my car so I can bring it back and load my car and then head out. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I just was kind of losing faith in the markets, but this one was okay, not great, but not bad. So I think I did better than I expected, but also not as much as I wanted. So yeah, we'll go over all of that once we get home. Everything is packed in the car. All fits. Everything is done. I have put it all back. I need to fill out the stuff I'm going to do for this week's drop. Otherwise, I'm done. So I will see you guys in the recap of this vlog. Welcome back. It has been a few days so I have had time to process and kind of think about the market and reflect on what I think I did well, what I think did not go so well, and how I can improve. So let's just get right into it. The first thing we're going to talk about is just the general logistics of the market. So the location was in Redondo Beach and it was from 10 to 3, although you could come in as early as 7.30 a.m. to start setting up. Last time it was $75, but this market it was... $99 so it was kind of a significant increase not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things but percentage wise it is kind of big it's like a 25% increase so or 30% increase technically I would say that it has about like 40 to 50 vendors because it was the holiday market they did have a Santa photo booth so that was really cute and they also usually have some kind of like class so this time they had like a drop-off kids class so I saw them in the corner doing like yoga stretches and stuff so that seems like a fun thing for parents if they want to come to this market i do think this market caters towards like a little bit of an older demographic so maybe like the late 20s 30s 40s range would be the average age of the person who attends this market now that all the logistics is done i'm gonna just head into how i think i did at this market early in the vlog i mentioned a few things i want to improve on one of the things that i wanted to do was upgrade my sign you know i can't exactly calculate how much better i did just because of the sign because i don't really know but i do feel like it kind of gave my booth a more professional looking appearance and I do think more people came in but I think the greatest change I did to my booth was instead of organizing everything by category like just doing tops and then sweaters and then jackets and then dresses or anything like that for each rack I decided to organize by aesthetic I did notice that at this market compared to Los Feliz Flea people were lingering more at each rack and kind of sifting through piece by piece rather than just kind of glancing and looking and then leaving and going to another booth. I also brought less items to this market and I feel like that helps a lot with people just feeling more comfortable browsing to my booth. I don't think I mentioned it in this video but I did try to be a little bit more involved with the customers, you know, talking to them, not always being on my phone, uh, welcoming them, letting them know I had a mirror. It's not like I talked a lot more but I do think I tried to have a more welcoming presence and I think that it did have some somewhat of an effect. Overall, I did better than I was expecting. Like I kind of just felt like oh, this was going to be a very low profit market and it wasn't 
high profit. I would still say it was on the lower end, but it did still make a profit. I made by my booth fee and a little bit extra. A few of the vendors that I talked to at the market seemed to say that it was really slow. Normally, I would want to net profit about like $250. I think that would be a good baseline for flea markets to be worth it for me. Since I'm talking about the profit that I made, I'll just go right into what sold. So at this market, I sold a total of eight items. The first item that sold was an 80s velvet black mini dress. I'll put a picture of it up right here. And the customer paid $34. Then I sold a 80s alpaca print knit cardigan and that sold for $40. I also sold a black leather blazer jacket which sold for $46. Then I sold a 80s red suede high rise pants for $52. I sold a pair of YJK low rise boot cut Tommy jeans for $32. A fuzzy brown and orange knit vest for $28 an 80s red puss sleeve floral blouse for $24 and an Oscar de la Renta brown sweater for $42. The gross profit for this market was $302. The fee was $6.46. The booth fee was $99. The sales tax was $26.20. The item cost was $75.11. So my total profit for this market was $95.23. I did bring my own food for this market so I didn't have to deduct that cost. And I technically did buy that sign for this market, but I am planning on using it for other markets as well. And just like, I don't consider it as a cost for this specific market. So I'm not including that. If I did, I would be negative, but I'm not counting it. So I'm in the positive and made a net of $95.23. So hourly wage, if I'm considering just the hours that I'm working for that day, $11.87 for my hourly wage, which is lower the minimum wage you know so it's kind of not worth it but you know at least i made a profit so ideally i would want to make more of the 250 dollar mark which 250 divided by eight would be about 31 dollars 25 cents for my hourly wage if i was doing like an eight hour day not including the extra work that i have to do i also know that the economy is like really not great right now and people are not spending as much i did think the fact that it was the holiday season would have offset that a little bit but maybe people are not going to markets to shop for Christmas. They're just going to the mall. So uh, I'm not really sure. I, I do feel like I want to do markets still, but I'm probably going to skip January and February just because those are sore months. But overall, I think I prepped as much as I could. I did the best I could. I did make a lot of improvements for this specific market, but there's one thing that I also wanted to work on and try to improve. I want to have a quicker setup for the curtains I brought. I originally had them on like this string and then I like tied it to the tent poles but I do feel like that takes a little bit too long so I was just thinking like maybe I could get really strong magnets and then because my tent is made out of metal I can just like magnet it on and that would be so much faster than what I was doing before so I'm going to try to implement that for the next market I go to which will be in like several months so hopefully I remember to actually do that I do want to figure out a new situation for how to hang my mirror and to make it look professional so that's something that I'll be workshopping and hopefully I can improve by the next market. But otherwise, that is everything for this video. Let me know if you have any questions about this market in particular or just flea markets in general. I do have a few other market vlogs where I show exactly like how I pack my car and just like how I bag my items, all that stuff. So if you're interested in that, then you can look at those videos. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.